Hey everybody, AJ back again with you. Uh, it's been about three or four weeks since my last video. Sorry about that. I've had a lot of stuff going on here with work and uh, everything else. But uh, hey, I'm back with a new video today. Today we're going to review the Minolta CLE and some Kodak uh, 2254. Be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, like in the intro I said, hey, we're gonna review the uh, Minolta CLE and some Kodak 2254. Uh, this camera was produced in 1980. It was a leftover or a continuation from the uh, partnership of Minolta and Leica prior. So, but like I said, this was introduced in 1980. The CLE portion stands for Compact Leica Electronic. Um, Short, sweet, simple. I'm not going to go over every single thing. There's plenty of reviews, probably a bunch of videos on YouTube as well. But the main thing is, is this is a rangefinder. Uh, it's a good entry point if you don't want to or don't have the money to spend on a Leica. Because no joke, they're going to set you back. Um, and I've already been blamed by a couple of people that they had to buy this one. So you know who you are out there. And I also got this one from a buddy of mine, which I'm surprised that I actually physically got it away from you. Thank you. But um, on this camera right now, I have the Voigtlander Nocton 40 millimeter F1.4. Outstanding lens. It never comes off. It never will come off. Um, I use this a lot and I've really started taking it with me on every single shoot that I go to now, including when I take this guy out too, just for some behind the scenes stuff and fun. But like I said, this was made in 1980 by Minolta. And depending on who you talk to, they're gonna tell you that this was probably the best Leica made up until the M6 or M7, just because of the electronics in it. Um, now the camera itself goes from 25 up to either 16 or 32. I don't shoot that high, so I really don't know. I try to shoot as low as I can. That way, less grain, more fun. Uh, now, it does have a plus two for an EV. So if you're shooting at 25, say if you're shooting like this 2254 I did, I shot it wide open, put the lens down to f1.4, and then plus two on the EV, guess what? Um, that got me down to six, you know, ISO six, which... In bright sun here in New Mexico, you definitely need that for that film. But I digress. Um, the uh, the frame lines in this are 28, 40, and 90, which are covered perfectly in here. You can also use Leica M glass if you happen to have some, or you come across some and pick it up for dirt cheap, which does happen. So if you find it, grab it. But I'm not letting go of this camera. It's not leaving me. No one's getting it from me. It'll probably go to my kids if it's still working by then. Hopefully the electronics don't go out. If it does, it's gonna be a shelf queen like some of these back here. But I love this camera. It's great, especially you know, me wearing glasses now with it being a rangefinder. It's outstanding. I have not missed a shot yet. It'll happen, I know it will. But for everyone, Take a look at this camera, enjoy it if you can. You can get into them. I've seen them go for as low as $600 just for the body, depending on the condition. So, but now let's talk about the film. The Kodak 2254 is an intermediate Vision 3 film. They say you can scan it with, you know, laser, uh, CRT, or LED. Really, I don't get into all that stuff. So, I take it with me on just about every shoot with the, uh, the CLE. And living here in New Mexico, it's great because it has, you know, being a the F 1.6 stock, it needs a lot of light. I mean, I've tried shooting it inside. It doesn't work out too well. It, it gives you some funky colors. Even uh, F 25 or 50, the film is going to be blue. I mean, it's it, it comes out blue. It looks pretty cool, but it's blue. 
If you're trying to get skin tones, man, they come out pretty good if you happen to get a good stock. You know, it depends on who you buy it from and how well it was stored. Um, this last session I did, uh, I shot everything, you know, with a set it at 25, gave it a, a plus two on the EV and shot wide open. You know, I was ranging anywhere from 250th to, you know, a thousand, you know. So I, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I know the colors came out funky. So I converted it to black and white in the photos that you're going to see. It was kind of a, just a fun shoot that we did. So it's a good film. You can buy it in bulk now. I mean, there's even people on uh, eBay, Etsy that you can buy it from in individual roles. Um, I'll leave a link to some of them down below of the guys who have it for sale and uh, go give them a visit. But um, we'll be right back. Check out these images. All right, welcome back. Hey, everybody. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, you know, this is a great combination, little compact camera to carry around with you. I wouldn't recommend leaving it in the car because, you know, it could damage the electronics or, you know, just tossing it in a bag. You know, you might damage it jostling it around. But, you know, for, you know, walking around, doing family things, you know, little family shoots or behind the scenes shoots, it's perfect for that because it doesn't take up a lot of room. As far as the film goes, like I said, I'll leave some links to some people that y'all can go take a look at and, you know, search, search Google, you know, you can find images shot with this, see what it looks like. And, uh, um, hope y'all enjoyed this video. You got any questions, comments, leave them down below and, um, I'll try to answer them. So just remember everybody, respect everybody, treat them as you want to be treated and y'all have an amazing weekend, day, week, whatever, depending on when you're watching this, I'll see y'all later.